Now that you know what equipment to use, let's move on to how to use it. Effective longlining is all about the relationship between you and the horse's mouth, and this relationship is your responsibility. To be effective, you must maintain quality contact, a definition that will change because the needs of a green or mistrained horse will be very different from the needs of a balanced and engaged one. When you longline, your body is one point on the triangle formed by the horse's hindquarter, his mouth, and you. With contact, if you shorten the outside line, the horse will turn out. If you lengthen the outside line, the horse will come in. If the horse falls out and you don't move your feet to maintain the relationship, the horse will either overflex or stop or both. This fellow is a Welsh cob in Spokane, Washington. Look how tight the lines have gotten. The horse is still going forward, but he's overflexing in self-defense. Can you see how high he's lifting his hind leg over the cavaletti? That bit's good, but the fact that he's trying to do all the work with the forehand isn't. That he doesn't have the use of his head and neck for balance is forcing him onto his forehand. His weight-bearing hind hoof is tipped forward on the toe preparatory to leaving the ground, while his front weight-bearing hoof is still firmly planted. He's tipped over his forehand, largely due to the handler having a death grip on his face. A horse's head and neck is very important to their balance and key to their ability to move correctly. If you take away their ability to use their head and neck, you force them to go to extraordinary measures to maintain their balance while continuing to move. In this slide, we have another handler issue. The outside rein is preventing the horse from following the curve of the circle. The hindquarter is toward the handler, the head is out. You can see the hindquarter is pulled in. Look where the inside hind leg is landing in relationship to where the front hoof has left the ground. It's toward the handler by about half a hoof's width, when it should be toward the midline by half a hoof print. Feather's owner has taken the reins for the first time and is getting acquainted with what happens when the reins aren't balanced. In the beginning, a new longliner often doesn't realize balance is a feel, not an equality of rein height or length. The outside rein is longer by the length of the horse, which makes it heavier. It is also closer to the ground where it leaves contact with the horse's body and can often bump against the ground. Tightening the rein to keep it off the ground or similar in height to the inside rein is a frequent newbie mistake. Feather is an exceptional mover, easily carrying her forehand, even while having her hindquarters pulled in and her head pulled out. Notice the rein height. The dent in her chest shows she lifts her forehand, and the rein height placement shows she is more capable of carrying her forehand when properly longlined. Feather is an Arab quarter horse cross in Salem, Oregon. Let's look at the horse generated issues you may have when you longline. Later, I will show you a horse who displays every single one of the following issues in a single longlining session. This is a great example of pulling with the forehand. Remember the Welsh cob over flexed over Cavaletti, how his front foot was planted while the diagonal hind was already tipped up ready to leave the ground? See the same thing here? The front end is carrying the load, but this time it isn't due to the handler. Because this pony has self-carriage issues, she has no idea she has a back end. She's above the bit and pulling with the forehand while the hindquarters poke along behind, out of sync and unengaged. This is Foxy, Section C Welsh in Spokane. Next we see a movement, self-carriage issue that was trainer rider created. You can see by this horse's posture he has been worked in restrictive side reins or has been bumped off the bit, ridden on a tight rein in a strong bit, and or hasn't a clue how to use his butt. Sometimes a horse will be so green he doesn't have the muscle or control to accept contact on both reins, and the outside rein must be used very lightly and or intermittently until the horse develops enough stature to carry contact on both reins. In this case, this fellow's posture has nothing to do with being green and everything to do with how he was trained slash handled in the past. Careful long lining with adequate impulsion will solve this problem. The hindquarters have to be reconnected to the head by building back muscle and engagement. If you have this problem, be patient. Lighten your contact. Use intermittent contact. Hug and release because a horse can't lean on something that isn't there. And encourage the horse to go more forward. Judicious work over Cavaletti will speed the progress along. This Arab cross gelding belongs to Allison from Salem, Oregon. Next we look at lack of impulsion, also known as failure to go forward. Notice the rein is connected directly to the bit, completely bypassing the surcingle. This alternate connection has a more direct effect than the normal through surcingle to bit arrangement, but it is not as effective for certain problems as the through bit to surcingle connection. 
This mare is offering the equivalent of a western jog while complaining loudly about everything. The bit, the work, the weather, the people watching, and the footing. All her weight is on the forehand, and there is no moment of suspension in the trot. As a result, the hind foot doesn't make it into the front footprint. This horse is on the bit and lifting the base of the neck, just not pushing adequately from behind. The horse is so busy arguing about doing the work and fussing with the bit, which is a broken snaffle, she couldn't concentrate on the work. Each hind foot is plowing a tidy little furrow in the arena footing. This picture is another good argument for the Boucher snaffle. Because it is curved enough to accommodate the tongue and unjoin it, it causes less of a fuss in young horses and is suiting to older horses. It really is the perfect bit for this exercise. This is Eliana, an Oldenburg mare owned by Donna Yannick, Lebanon, Oregon. This one's tricky. You have to look close to see this horse is pulling with the forehand. Look at the base of his neck. See how it bows forward? His neck looks tense and stiff. He's learned a posture of carrying his head a certain way, but not correctly through the back. He was started in a bidding rig. Instead of pushing from behind and carrying his forehand, he's pulling from the front and faking it. This problem takes a lot of work and a lot of patience to fix, but it can be fixed. This guy actually has good confirmation, and if he hadn't been mucked with at the start would be an awesome mover. He's got plenty of power behind, he just has a warped idea how his body should do its job. This Morgan Gelding is owned by Larry, Maple Valley, Washington. Remember the picture of Feather? Her hindquarters were being pulled into the circle by a too tight outside rein. Here we see the same stepping in on the hind leg, but it's a horse issue, not a handler one. Proper engagement and balance on a curve requires engagement of the inside hind leg. It must step up under the belly to carry the horse correctly, bent around a curve. Instead, Champ tries to protect stiff muscles and pops his inside shoulder in, moves his head out and places his inside hind foot inside the track of the inside front foot to maintain balance. Look at him fighting against the inside rein, trying to go around the circle with his head out and his shoulder dropped into the circle. Look at where his front foot left the ground. The inside hind leg has set down toward the handler instead of on the other side of the footprint. In all fairness, Champ has some age soundness issues, which is why his owner is learning to longline them. She is using longlining to provide physical therapy to get his movement correct, working the off bits without overloading him with the weight of a rider. By the end of our work together, he was moving much better and was much happier and more comfortable. Next, let's look at falling out. Wendy has her head toward the handler and the circle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When this happens, release contact on the outside rein and follow the horse out while squeezing and releasing the inside rein. Once your horse establishes balance and position on the circle, re-establish contact on the outside rein. Wendy, the tied in a knot mule from our first video, was very young and green and disinclined to work. If she wasn't questioning whether she actually had to work, she was falling in or falling out. Sadly, her attitude was directly related to an injury she incurred during cutting training before her joints were fully closed. There's a lesson in this. You just need to be willing to hear it. Remember I said you could get everything in a single longlining session? Here's my example. Starting at the top left, we've got above the bit and falling in, followed by over flex but concentrating very hard. Next, he's above the bit and falling out, and finally, the image of perfection, balanced, engaged, forward, and attentive. This is Lipazon Gelding from the first video. This was his orientation lesson, and he was all over the map, which is not unusual. Once he figured out what was required, he settled in and provided a model performance. I would be remiss if I didn't close this Cliff Notes version of longlining without a bit on using Cavaletti. Cavaletti can help fix a number of problems. Use of Cavaletti can demonstrate and encourage engagement, self-carriage, and impulsion. When used properly, you're telling the horse, move like this. Remember Echo? In this picture, he is forward, lifting the base of his neck and on the bit. Look at the difference in compression of the hind weight-bearing fetlock compared to the front. This signifies there is more weight being carried behind. As to his confirmation, there is now definition where his neck meets his shoulder and his sway back is a thing of the past.